Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great and welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to attempt to make a USB arcade gamepad. Now I know what you think. Electronics? That sounds like a lot of complicated wiring, diagrams, soldering and all that stuff. But let me show you something. I picked this kit up from eBay for under 20 bucks and it got all the mechanical things you need. All the buttons, the joystick, uh, a breakout board for USB and all the cables. The cables all have a plug on one side to go into the breakout board and those spade connections uh, to make connection with the buttons. So there is zero wiring involved and you don't have to be an engineer to do this. I made a super crude sketch to know where all the buttons are gonna go and the joystick and the overall dimensions. And if my calculations are correct, it should all fit onto this board. So I'm gonna set up my camera and cut this to dimensions really quick. Okay, now I got all my pieces cut out. Now the easiest way to assemble this would be just using, you know, screw and glues and you drill the holes and you put the joystick in and the buttons and you're done. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to use my box drum jig, which looks like this, to make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so this is my box drum jig and it's actually pretty simple. It is a normal table saw slat with an attachment and this is the carriage which holds the work pieces. And you can see on the back it got this pin right here, which is the exact same size as my blade. So I can move it to the starting position, make a cut, moving to the other side, make another cut, move it to the middle and just hog out the material. And once I'm done with one side, I can flip around the workpiece, flip those ones around by loosening a screw here, and then cut the other side. And with this simple jig you can get pretty accurate box joints. So let me cut some and I'll show you. I didn't film myself flipping around the workpiece and those little blocks of plywood but that's only because I haven't used this jig in a while and the humidity down here in the basement actually made the plywood swell up so it was all a bit seized and annoying to work with but the box joint actually came out really nice so check those out so here it is uh, they are a bit too shallow and I made a mistake here but I'm gonna fill that up with sawdust when I glue it up and afterwards, I'm gonna round it over on the router table anyway, so you're not gonna see any of that. So that's great. I actually am quite surprised how well this worked, cause I told you it's swole up. So I was expecting failure right from the start, to be honest. So, you know, pretty great for that. Okay, here it is all clamped up. I put some blocks in there to spread the clamping force and all the joints are pulled tight. So there's nothing left to do for now but to wait. So I guess I'll see you in an hour or two. Okay, it is now 15 hours later cause I kinda lost track of time and yeah. So now we're back, the box is done, all glued up. So let me get the layout, cut it out and drill some holes. I also went ahead and glued in the top just to make this go a little bit faster. And here's my layout and I want this to go kind of up here so you have some space for your palm uh, when you want to play. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, mark the holes, drill those out and get back to you. All the holes are drilled, so I'm gonna set up my router table and give all the edges a nice round over. As always, sanding took way too long, but the enclosure is done. I went all the way up to 240, and the last thing I did was to insert those little brackets you can see there, hopefully. Those will hold a piece of acrylic sheet to close off the enclosure. As a last detail, I added this little slot here. This is gonna let the USB cable escape. Uh, since I can't really use this sort of strain relief, I am just gonna use some two-part epoxy from the inside to glue it into place and you know just be careful to not pull that hard. And since everything after this is electronics, I'm gonna take some boiled linseed oil and seal the wood. So while that's drying, I can show you how the electronics work. This is the brain box. And the nice thing about this is that you can't mess this up. The plugs only fit in the right spot. So you got the USB plug, USB cord, you fit that in there. You got this cable, which is for the joystick, you fit that in there and it only fits one way. You can't fit it the wrong way around. And in here, all the connections are made. And for the button, you got those. They have the plug on one side that you plug into any of those. You can later in, on your computer configure those to be the right buttons. And you connect those two bits to the buttons. And it doesn't matter which way around, there's no right or wrong. You just connect those, connect it here, it plugs in. You don't have to inst install any drivers, it just works, which is great. So now that you know how this works, I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the real box. And here's the finished controller. It looks really nice. In the black was a walnut. You got those plexiglass sheets on the bottom so you can see what's going on inside and also makes it really easy to swap around the buttons afterwards. You just take out four little screws. And there's nothing left to do but to try it out if it actually works. And that's a good sign. Let's see, controller, there it is. And yeah, that looks nice. I don't know if you can see this, but all the buttons do light up and the joystick still does work. So yeah, <laughs> that's good, <laughs> that's a relief. I want to thank everyone for watching and I hope you found some of the information useful. If you have any comments or ideas about this project or future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Until then, have a great day.